Recently, I had a client of mine send me an email that said he was very thankful for the results that he's getting. He's actually setting more appointments, and he's even writing a brand new micro niche, and he's writing a bunch of accounts. He's got a couple dozen accounts so far, even in this year. And he was also just very thankful for a large one that he recently got. And I was thinking about that from the perspective of what really now is the next level for him? What does he need to do now to really accelerate and get to the next level? What has to change? And I'm reminded that you as an insurance agent have probably been doing what you've been doing now for some time. And so the question is, is are you going to level up in order to get to the next level? Or are you going to be really happy with where you're at on cruise control? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Today, we're going to be talking about how to level up in order to write more business and make more commission. Stay tuned. Hey, everybody. My name is Charles Specht. I'm the host of the Millionaire Insurance Producer Podcast. Thank you for being here today. Absolutely. Thank you for being here today. Do you enjoy leveling up? Do you like to go to the next level? Or are you someone that just very much, very often gets used to the status quo? The status quo can be a very good thing if you are in the right place. But the status quo can also be shackles and weights on your ankles. If you've ever tried to run a sprint or a marathon or anything like that with weights on your ankles, you're not going very fast. And you're going to get tired much more quickly. See, the problem is that you as an insurance agent, we as insurance agents, producers, salespeople, is that so very often we are doing things that are slowing us down, where we're not able to actually get to the level that we want to get to. And so I want to talk to you in this episode about the need to level up, because I do believe that this is probably one of the areas that most insurance agents are relatively deficient. And even for insurance agency owners, I would tell you, you guys need to just sort of take a step back and look at your agency to where it's at versus where you want it to go. Because for the most part, it is quite unlikely that to get to where you want to go, you can continue doing what got you to this point. That something dramatic has to change. We're going to call that leveling up. We're going to call that leveling up. You know, I actually work with a lot of different insurance producers from all over the United States and Canada. Uh, those are typically where my clients tend to be at. And for the most part, I would say they're all over the spectrum in regards to the size of the types of accounts they go after, what types of products they sell, commercial insurance, personal lines, employee health benefits, and so forth. Uh, a lot of different people are focusing on a lot of different things. I have clients that are also writing really large accounts. I have clients that are writing small accounts. Many people might think that I sort of mostly work with uh, agents that are at bigger agencies and so forth, and that's really not the case. I definitely have clients that are there, but I would say I kind of work with, really with the standard insurance agent and agency that's out there, and that tends to be sort of a small to medium-sized agency. So that tends to be the primary agencies that I'm working with as well. But I want to tell you just even kind of the differences in regards to what can be done. I have one client who he got a broker of record letter. We kind of worked on this over the course of several weeks, and he got the broker of record letter on an account that paid him $1.1 million of commission. Not premium, commission. $1.1 million of commission. It was an employee health benefits client. And I have other clients all over the spectrum, all the way down to those that are working on stuff that might be several hundred dollars or maybe just $1,000 or so of commission. It depends on a lot of different factors. A lot of these factors come into play based upon the size of the agency, the geographic location of the agency, and even then what is sort of the bread and butter of this agency. You know, if you are working at a small agency, you're probably not going after very large accounts because you don't have maybe even the servicing team behind you to service those accounts on a go-forward basis. Maybe you don't even have access to a lot of the markets, and that's okay. 
we work with you where you are at. And frankly, if you have access to one insurance carrier that is really good at what they do, you can be very, very successful. But I know this to be the case, that if you're an employee health benefits agent or agency, getting access to the markets isn't a thing. That's not hard. The same really comes down to the property and casualty for the most part, is that even if you are a brand new startup insurance agency, you can get access to a number of different markets, both standard, non-standard, direct, and so forth, and not direct. And you can have a whole lot of success going after whatever those insurance carriers want to write. The real issue is, are you really going to focus in the area that's going to get you the best results as you're leveling up, or are you going to play small? Or are you going to play small? I want to ask you a question, Mr., Miss, Mrs. Insurance Agent, producer, are you going big or are you playing small? That's the issue. That's the issue. Going big or playing small. Or I guess there really is a third option here is that you're just playing it safe. You're either going real big, you're going after your big stuff, you are leveling up, or you're kind of just playing small. You're just, you know you've been playing small. Or you know what? You've been on cruise control for a while and you've just been playing it safe. I'm not here to say that either of these is right or wrong. Because every single person is different, your geographic territory, your agency, and all that kind of stuff. But you're the person that has to look yourself in the mirror. You have to decide whether or not you are playing it safe, going small, or going big. You're the one that has to decide that. But I would tell you that, for the most part, the vast majority of insurance agents out there are, te- are typically playing it safe or small. Very few are going big. Very few are going big. So there's a lot of different insurance agents out there who have different size books of business. Uh, The vast majority of them are going to be under a million dollars of commission, whereas there's a very number, a very large number of agents that have a million dollar or more book of business. But that number decreases dramatically when you start talking about even a $2 million book of business or greater. It's just hard to get to that point, let alone a three or a four or some agents out there that have a $5 million commission book of business or seven Um, I know one agent, she has a $13 million book of business. That's commission, $13 million. That, frankly, is a crazy number. I mean, that's just a crazy, crazy number. And I would suspect there are plenty of other agents out there who have maybe even a book of business that's, that's significantly bigger than that. But $13 million, guess what? She's been in the business for quite some time, and she knows what she's doing. She is a beast, an animal. She is a closer, and she goes after very large accounts, obviously. Because you can't get to a $13 million commission book of business by writing small $5,000 premium accounts. It just ain't going to happen. You can't even get to that point if you're writing $5,000 commission accounts or $25,000 commission accounts. You just can't get there. There has to be a significant aspect of leveling up. But like anybody else, that producer, $13 million book of business, she started out writing relatively small stuff. No doubt when she got in the business, she wasn't writing very large stuff. But over the course of time, she leveled up and then leveled up and then leveled up and then leveled up. But the problem is that every single insurance agent, for the most part, unless they are leveling up, finds a level of comfort and there they sit. Is that where you're at? Is that where you're at? Are you stuck Are you stuck at, at the status quo? Are you stuck at cruise control? Are you stuck at just simply paying the bills and being happy with that? Or do you want to accomplish more? Do you want to level up? It is not difficult to level up. It is probably, however, one of the more difficult decisions to make in regards to leveling up is that it's really up here. I'm pointing on my, your head. I'm, I'm pointing on my head. It's It's a mindset shift. It is a game in the head because you can't level up and still regress to writing the old stuff that you were used to. In other words, you have to turn your back on what got you there in order to focus your attention on getting the next level. And so if you are going to level up the size of the account significantly, then that's going to require you do a completely different type of work. Now, this might look a little bit different for each person. 
I tend to focus on commercial insurance agents. I have a fair number of personal lines as well, but then frankly, there's no difference. It's just the numbers at the end of the day. You might be a personal lines agent who's just like writing, you know, thousand to three thousand dollar premium homeowners accounts. Do you really have to stay there? Can you write bigger accounts? Can you go after bigger high net worth accounts? Can you go after instead of just sort of like working on the stuff that calls into your office, which really isn't going to be for the most part, large accounts. Can you start calling on very large business owners who are probably going to have, you know, an extra cottage somewhere. They've got a vacation home. They've got a Lambo in the garage and they've got other things. And so that premium is going up significantly. Absolutely. You could, but what does it require? It requires that you stop calling these people back who are calling in trying to save 50 bucks on their homeowner's insurance policy. It requires a, a just sort of a pushback on mediocrity in order to get to the point that is going to level up. The same thing goes with writing commercial insurance. What size premium, if you were to look at the types of accounts that you wrote last year, what is the average size premium account that you wrote? Let's get rid of maybe your largest one and your smallest one, and then what did it average out to? That's going to be sort of your sort of cruise control. That's going to be where you're at right now. What would it require then to get to that next level? If you're finding yourself that your typical account is, say, maybe around seven, dollars $8,000, it's going to require a significant uptake. Look, I can also tell you that you are not ever going to get to the place of wealth if you're going after $7,000 premium accounts. It is not going to happen. Literally, it is not going to happen if you're going after $7,000 premium accounts. Now, that's a big difference maybe, for example, if you are an agency owner or if you're a producer. Those are two completely different aspects on maybe the answer on this. But even for those who are agency owners, please, please, please do not be going after $7,000 premium accounts. I'm not saying you can't write them. I'm just saying, why would you want to? If you can write bigger accounts, you probably know this maybe better even than I do is that the small accounts tend to be more problematic. They tend to go into cancellation mode for non-pay so much more. They nickel and dime you for a, a number of different things. The larger accounts, they tend to be a little bit more sophisticated. They tend to not have cash flow issues. They're going to pay their bills and they understand what it is to run a business and are not going to be worried about little bitty stuff. And so it's just a, it's a difference in the mind. It's a difference in your mindset on what type of an account are you going to go after? And so again, I ask you, what is the average size of the premium accounts that you have been writing in the last 12 months? If it is small, say like, I would say, if it's somewhere between five and $25,000 of premium, then you probably need to multiply it anywhere from four to 10 times. You need to multiply it by four to 10 times. If I would just say there's really no reason why any commercial insurance agent who is an independent agent should really ever be spending their time quoting on stuff that is less than $35,000 of, of premium, premium. I mean, there are so many accounts out there that are just bigger than that. Why would you waste your time on those small accounts? You say, well, Charles, that's, uh, you know, they just, they keep calling me. I'm just, I can, I can close on those easier. Oh, oh, okay. Um, I guess you just want to sort of pass by on the $150,000 premium accounts then. You know, you could just be working on those and, you know, write a bunch of those and that would go really well, right? I mean, couldn't you do that? I think you could. I know you could. You absolutely could. What's stopping you? It's up here. Mindset. Mindset is a plague. Mindset is the thing that holds us back. It is the shackles, the weight on the ankles. It is the thing that keeps us in the rut of mediocrity. This aspect of mindset, I don't think can actually be, you know, um, talked about enough. It really is that significant. Mindset is what is causing you to go small or stay on cruise control. It is. It's very difficult to push against the grain of what you feel comfortable with. But you can't level up if you don't actually do something different. So how can you level up? Uh, maybe a couple things. I want to talk to you. Just a couple of things is that 
first and foremost, you have to decide, do you really want to? Do you really want to? And again, I'm trying not to be judgmental here. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. That's, that's why the insurance business is beautiful. Um, if you are happy with what you're doing right now, then great. Who am I to say something different? I don't get to decide what your life is going to be. You get to build what you want to build. You want a, you know, a $300,000 book of business and you're happy with that? Great. I applaud you. I mean, if that's what you want, then you have made it. Awesome. Congratulations. But I would suspect you're probably listening to this podcast because that wouldn't be adequate for you. You're not going to settle for a $300,000 book of business when you re would rather have a $3 million book of business. And you know, you, you know this, you absolutely know this, that you can't get to a $3 million book of business doing the same stuff that got you to 300000 It just can't happen. And so you got to level up. So ask yourself, what do you want to get to? What do you want to get to? And I would say definitely take some time brainstorming here. Write stuff down. You know, what, is your, what types of accounts do you want going forward? What micro niche industry? Uh, what size of accounts? What geographic territory? What policies are you going to write for them? You need to really kind of decide your ideal client and then your micro niche that you're going after. And frankly, the size of the account. The size of the account. How many clients can you handle? How many can you manage? How many gets to the point in which you're starting to pull out your hair and you're really not too happy anymore? Because everybody has that sort of tipping point that you're just not willing to, to go past that point, tip over, and then just be unhappy with life. We don't want to do that. And so everybody has to figure out what that point is. You have to decide at what type of account, size of account, are you going to go after versus not go after. Because that premium size, which you know, is ultimately going to transfer into commission because, I mean, you know this, I like to talk commission, not so much premium. For the sake of this episode, I'm talking premium because usually it's going to translate into commission. But, I mean, look, I, I, I have seen $100,000 premium accounts written at 2% and $50,000 premium accounts written at 10%. Guess which one I would rather rewrite? Absolutely. But that is not normal, right? That is not normal. In fact, I would tell you to sort of step back, look at the accounts that you're writing. Also look at the carriers you're writing with and the commission split or percentage that they're paying you. What commission percentage are these carriers paying you? And whatever they're paying you, ask for more. Every single time you get a quote, ask for more. If they're giving you a quote with 12, why can't they give it to you with 14? If they're giving you a quote at 15, why can't they give it to you at 17? Ask for it. It's amazing what you get when you ask. And if you go from, say, a 10% commission to an 11%, I mean, that's 1% in commission, but that's really close to about like almost 10% in the actual revenue. And so if you do that on every single account that you write, you're going to write additional 10% revenue over the course of a year and even your lifetime if you do it over the course of your lifetime. And so you build your book of business based upon that. Look, at, again, it's talking about leveling up and not settling for what is just given to us. Can't just level up by settling. That just can't happen. So I would say look at the carrier's and the commissions that they're paying you. And then I would definitely take a look at the ones that are paying you more. And that's the playground where I'm going to play. That's the pond where I'm going to swim. I mean, why really would I want to spend my time focusing and writing business with a carrier that's paying me 7% or 9% when I can focus on a carrier that's paying me 15 or 17 or maybe even as high as 20%? I know exactly where I'm going to spend my time because that carrier that's 15, 17%, 20%, they are absolutely very, very competitive, maybe even the number one most competitively priced insurance carrier at a certain number of micro niches. You just got to figure out what they are. When you figure out what they are, then you write as much of that business as you can at the larger commission split, and you're going to be so much happier. Look, this is just comes down to the numbers, and prospecting is a numbers game. It is absolutely a numbers game. Prospecting is a numbers game, and this prospecting attitude also takes place in determining which carrier you and your agency will write business with. And so I want to speak to you as insurance producers. Please don't be one of those producers who ends up getting a quote, places the business, and after it's done, you ask, by the way, how much commission were we getting on that account? Don't be that person. You don't want to be that person. 
That I think is lazy and it does not do a very good job for your agency going forward. I'm not saying don't write the business if that is the best place to play it or place it. Don't say that I said that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that before you even get to that point, you should be deciding which carriers you're going to be placing business with. Absolutely. You absolutely need to do that. Why? Because this is war. And because inflation is a real thing, because the dollar doesn't go as far as it does anymore, and because, frankly, if you are going to level up, you need to make more money, period. At the end of the day, that's it. You want to write bigger premium accounts at a higher commission percentage, and you want to write more of those accounts every single year. And if you can write bigger accounts with higher commission percentages and write more of those accounts, that is a trifecta of success. Higher premiums, bigger commission splits. You are, you are going to be having, like, I just, man, I just think about this. A, a lot of success writing more accounts. When you really start to like, take a step back and ask yourself, what am I going to go after this year? You start to put together a strategy, a process on what you're going to focus on. And when you focus on the right type of size of a premium account, you're going to end up just making more money. When you start looking at which carrier you're going to place it with, with a larger commission percentage, you're going to make more money. And if you do it right, you should be able to write more accounts in the year. So you're going to get more commission, more accounts. This is really how you begin to level up. It frankly is, um, it's kind of interesting when I take a step back and look at it from my perspective, that how many different agency owners and producers do I speak to that really have no idea which insurance carriers they're planning to place business with or work with, and they really are kind of throwing mud against the wall to see what sticks. They really are. I just think that that's not very strategic. If there's one thing that I know about what I sort of focus on in regards to my sales strategy and so forth is that we do things for a reason. We have a purpose. There has to be a strategy attached to why we are doing something. There has to be a strategy attached to why we are doing something. And just because somebody or maybe even a sales rep throws at you a shiny object which is sometimes referred to as their, their appetite list. It says, these are the things we want, want to write. My question would be, great, what's the commission percentage you want to pay? If it is not good, I have to focus elsewhere. I have to focus elsewhere. Now, if that carrier is just the cheapest thing on planet Earth, well, that's a different issue, right? If you don't have any other carriers in which to, to work with, that's a different issue, right? But... Uh, look, that's not, that's not typically the case. That is definitely not always the case. That is not even very often the case. You get to decide and dictate what you're going to go after. And whatever micro niche you're going to go after, there is a certain number of carriers that are going to be number one, number two, or number three. You have to decide what those are and then put together a strategic plan, prospect, level up, win the business, period. This, is, this really isn't rocket science, although it can feel like brain surgery at times. It's not rocket science. But leveling up is absolutely within your grasp. But again, it's in the mindset. And I know, unfortunately, some of you right now, maybe it's you. Some of you right now are thinking about it and saying, I can't do it. I can't even, I can't even write the things now that I want to write. I would tell you that there's definitely holes and flaws in our sales processes. There are absolutely holes and flaws in the prospecting plan we put together, 100%. But if you are really dialed in, going bigger, leveling up is absolutely easier. It really is easier. I'm not saying easy. I'm saying easier. So much easier if you actually get rid of the holes and the flaws in your process. Then it's just a matter of picking the micro niche at the premium size in the geographic territory that you want to go after and then hitting it hard. Not playing weak, not being on cruise control, but actually prospecting with diligence. 
When you do that, you're going to have some significantly good results. You're going to be very happy with your overall success rate, your, your win ratio. Your commission check is going to go up. You're going to see the deposits in your bank account also increase. Frankly, it's just more fun. It's more fun to write bigger accounts. It is fun to actually have your prospects say, yes, I want to do business with you. Where do I sign? Who do I make that check out to? Whatever. It's fun. Aren't you a producer? Aren't you a salesperson who likes to sell? Aren't you somebody that likes to hear the word yes? I would suspect that you are. If you're not, please go be an account manager or go sell clothes at the Gap. Do something else because an insurance producer likes to win. They like the hunt. They like to hear the word yes. They like to have the prospect choose them over everybody else because the last time, I don't care if it's in a carrier that is very competitive or not competitive, I don't think there are any carriers out there right now who are paying any commission for second place. None. None of them pay commission for second place. You have to be number one. You have to be the winner. You have to be the one that the insurance buyer chooses. When you are that person, life is good. When you're not that person, life's not good. Life's no fun. It's no fun being in the insurance industry when you work hard and you work real hard and they don't get picked. That's no fun. I get it. That is no fun. And so, therefore, we have to eliminate the problems. We have to eliminate the holes, the flaws from your sales process and so that you can enjoy, typically, a 60% or higher win ratio on all the accounts that you're meeting with. 60% or higher win ratio on every single account that you meet with is definitely something you should be shooting for. It is by no means outside of the realm of possibility. That is absolutely what you be, should be shooting for as a minimum, 60% or higher. Absolutely. If you're not hitting that, something's wrong. Something is dr drastically wrong. You, you maybe don't have the right carriers for the type of business you're going after. Maybe it is a, process, a problem with you just not getting enough at-bats. You're not getting enough prospects to meet with you. Yep, could be a number of different things. Maybe it's that you're not coming across with enough empathy, and so they're not actually you know, feeling that you get them or understand them or that you care. Or maybe you just have commission breath, and every time they see you, they just think that there's dollar signs in your eyes. There could be a number of different reasons why you're not having the success, and so you've got to be able to find those holes and those flaws. But when you find those holes and those flaws... You can level up, but only those who level up are hunters, period. Account managers are happy with the status quo. Account managers are happy with their little salary and that they make every single week. And it doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. They're quite happy with that. Nothing wrong with that. We need account managers. But this isn't a podcast for account managers. This is a podcast for producers. I love my account managers. I love them all. I hope they continue to do a great job and that they make their salary. I hope they make their, their salary and earn it every single week. Producers, there is a reason, by the way. There is a reason. Producers tend to be agency owners, and producers get moved up to partner. I don't know of too many account managers who ever get moved up to partner because account managers are not hunters. The agency is a sales entity. It has to sell. Servicing takes place. An insurance agency is a sales organization. Have to sell. That's why the agency owners tend to be salespeople. That's why the people who are brought up into leadership and become partners, equity owners, are salespeople for the most part. It's because we're hunters. We want to continue to get more, level up, get bigger. We're the people who are thinking outside of the box. We're not people who are used to mediocrity or we want that. Which one are you? Which one are you? Excited about the status quo or hungry to level up? My name is Charles Specht. I'm the president and CEO of Permission Network Insurance Agency, where I teach and train insurance agents just like you how to build a $1 million or more book of business through signed broker of record letters. This is the Millionaire Insurance Producer Podcast.